The Bible is more than a single book. It's a collection of 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry written by dozens of different authors over thousands of years that all come together to tell one big story. It's a bigger story than you can even imagine. It's a big story about a really big God and what He did to rescue us. It shows us who we are and what we were created to do. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey, we started this big idea last week, uh, and anybody come to FX last night? Man, we had an awesome time at FX talking about creation. Uh, Everybody just repeat this after me. Say, God made the world and everything in it. And uh, we're really excited, fourth graders, you know this is your second week in here, we're really excited, you guys are here, we're going to have a great time today. Uh, we, we started this big idea last week, I was telling you guys how important it is that we talk about this a lot, because for us, we just really believe that as we talk about creation, how we look at the world, how we look at the world changes how we treat other people, it tra- changes how we think about ourselves, it changes what we do with our lives. And so, when we're talking about creation, it's important for us to understand that God made you, He has a plan for you. So... Don't miss this, boys, because we're telling a true story. It comes out of the Bible. This is out of the book of Genesis. Everybody say Genesis. Genesis. Chapter 1. Now, just to recap, if you weren't here last night, if you weren't at FX, we talked about how, you know, I told you last week, I said, hey, if you ask me what, how, did the, how did the world get here, I'd have to tell you, I don't know, because I wasn't here when it started. But thankfully, we have the eyewitness account of somebody that was there, right? We talked about how Jesus claimed to be God. He proved he was God by rising from the dead. And Jesus trusted Genesis to give us the story of, uh, of, of the start of the world, because Jesus was God's son. He was God, is what scripture tells us. And so he trusted Genesis, so it means we can trust Genesis. When we go to the book of Genesis, we read that on day one, God made light and he made dark, which is really, really cool. And then day two, we talk about how God made sky and God made the waters, what that means, what that looks like. I don't know exactly, but I know it had to have been amazing. Day three, we talked about how God made the plants, and he divided the plants and the waters so the sea went to where it was supposed to be. And then this is a big deal. The plants started producing seeds of their own kinds, okay? Day four, we talk about how God made... Oh, Sarah, your, your camera came up early. I don't know how, why that came up. If you cancel camera group on the right side, that'll get rid of that camera. Uh, day four, we talk about how God made the sun, the moon, and the stars, Day and and. and and specifically, day four talks about how that separated, again, light from dark. Day five, we talk about how God made the birds and the fish, which is really cool. And then last week, we kind of stopped short on day six because there was more to day six. But last week, we talked about how God made all the animals. Okay, everybody just shout out your favorite animal on three. Ready? One, two, three, go. That's my favorite animal, too. I heard blah. Okay, no. Uh, I don't know what your favorite animal is. But we talked about how God made every animal. Even animals that aren't alive anymore, right? Even animals that no longer exist, God made all of them, okay? Now, we did not finish what God finished on day six. We sort of left it a mystery, although I'm guessing if you look to your right or left, you could guess what else he had to make, right? Yeah. And then day seven, we talked about how God rested, okay? This is the story of creation. Now, obviously, God did make animals on day six, but what else did God make on day six? People! He made Adam and he made Eve, right? And so that's what the book of Genesis tells us. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. This is important. If you go to Genesis chapter 2, that is where the story of creation ends, okay? And this is what it says. So the heavens and the earth and everything in them were completed. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he'd been doing. So on that day, he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. He blessed it because on that day, he rested from all the work he had done. And then there's this weird statement. It says, here is the story of the heavens and the earth when they were created. It's like, wait a second. Moses, Moses is the guy who wrote Genesis. Moses, didn't we just read that? We just read in the beginning there was nothing but God, and then God said, let there be life. But listen, it says, here's the story of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And then watch this, it, at verse 5 to 7. At that time, bushes had not yet appeared on the earth. 
What? I thought you said day three, God made the plants. And he says, plants had not started to grow. Wait, wait, what? The Lord God had not sent rain on the earth. Wait, what? And then keep going. And there was no one to farm the land, but streams came from the surface. They watered the entire surface of the ground. And then the Lord God formed a man. And, and when you read that, if you read Genesis chapter two, you think, that's kind of confusing. Anybody confused by that? That's kind of confusing. In fact, as you get older, you might go to a classroom one day and there might be someone that stands up at the top in front of the classroom and they might say, remember how we talked last week what, what people's different worldviews are? Some people might say, oh, I don't really believe there is a God. And they, what you'll probably hear is something like this. They'll say, the book of Genesis has two completely different myths. And they'll say, oh, both of those are just myths, but they're two completely different ones. And when you read this, I remember reading this and thinking, well, was my Sunday school teacher wrong? Did God not create the world? That's a, that's a good question to ask. Everybody say creation. Everybody say creation. creation. Say God created the world and everything in it. So here's the deal. I want you to imagine that I have an assignment at school, okay? I go back to school and my teacher tells me, Jesse, you have to write a poem about your summer. Anybody have to do that when they go back to school? They have to tell their teacher about their summer? I always hated those assignments. Those were the worst assignments. I thought, I don't, don't turn my summer break into an assignment, okay? But that's always what I had to do when I first went back to school. And so let's pretend one of my teachers says, hey, Jesse, as an assignment, you have to write a poem about your summer break. And then I go to another class, right? Maybe that was my music teacher. And I go to my other class and they say, hey, you have to write a story about your summer break. So I have to do both of those. Can I read both of my versions of summer to you? Is that okay? Okay, here's my poem. I don't know. We should have, I should have some music. I don't have any music planned, but we should have some, you know, everybody. Oh, okay. That's enough. We don't need that. I had a great summer. It was really fun. We played outside a lot. Boy, I love the sun. I wrote this myself. Lots of things happened. We even went to the ER. The zoo, a salt mine, we traveled near and far. I loved my summer. It was awesome and great. Get here fast next summer. I can hardly wait. Thank you. Thank you. You're supposed to clap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Okay. Um, no. Okay. Right? That's my poem. But then I go to my next class and I have to, get, I have to, I have to write a story. And so I tell him about this. Let me tell you about last week. It was the end of my summer. And we were leaving church after Sunday afternoon. And my youngest son fell down. And as he fell down, he likes to suck on his bottom lip. Like this, because he's only one. And as he fell down, he bit his lip so hard it started to bleed. And it bled a lot. And it looked like, whew, man, this kid might need stitches or something. And so we took him to the ER and they had made us wait forever. It literally, it did take forever. We waited there and we got back to the room and by this time he had fallen asleep. So he wasn't even upset anymore, but he was upset when the, teeth, the doctor came and was like, okay, because that's what doctors do. No bedside manner whatsoever. What's wrong with you? Okay. And then he starts crying again and then they had to glue his lip shut, and that was my summer. Now, yeah, I know, not his lip. They didn't glue this part. They glue this part. He's fine, okay? He's fine. The kids are bouncy. All right, now, here's the thing. That's my story of my summer. Now, did those sound the same? They didn't sound the same, okay? They sounded different. One was a poem, and one was a story. Now, listen, Genesis chapter 2, this is important for us to understand. Remember when I said Genesis chapter 2 kind of shifts it says, hey, this is how God made the world. And then it says this, here is the story. That word story is used elsewhere in the Bible. And it means like a record, like you were there, like a genealogical record, like your parents' names were Marlon and Colleen and their parents' names were Joe and Jewel and their parents' names. I mean, like that kind of record, right? The first part of Genesis is poetry. Now we kind of miss this because when we read it, we read it in English, but it wasn't written in English. It was written in Hebrew. And before it was written in Hebrew, it was probably passed down by mouth. And so you, there's so much beauty in the, in the first part of Genesis. You guys recognize day one, God made light and dark. Day four, God made the sun and the moon and they helped separate light and dark. Day two, God made the sky in the water. Day five, God made the fish, which go in the, and the birds, which go in the, there's a symmetry, there's a poetry. Day three, God made plants, and from those plants came seeds. In day six, 
God made animals, and from those animals came more animals. And here's this cool, there's a cool shift in Genesis chapter 1 where it says, God made animals, and from animals came the same kind. But then God said, let us make mankind in our image. Plants would come from plants, and fish would come from fish, and birds would come from birds. But man and woman would come from God. The image of God. He said, let us make male and female in the image of God. There's this beautiful poetry in the first chapter of Genesis 1. Everybody say, wow. And then Genesis chapter 2 says, let me tell you more about that story. Kind of like I just told you a really quick poem, and then I told you more about that story. There was a garden on the earth that God created, and in that garden, there was, there was bushes that had just started to grow yet. God hadn't even sent rain yet. The plants were still growing, and then God reaches down, and he forms man. And what's really, really cool, watch this. The Lord said every other time in creation, this is referenced in the poem. In the poem, every time God creates, he says, it is but he says it's not good for man to be alone. So I'll make a helper who's just right for him. And then he says this, watch this. The man was sleeping and the Lord God took woman from out of the man's ribs. He took a rib and made woman. Now here's the amazing thing. Ladies, you have a lot of my respect, but in Bible days, you did not have a lot of respect. When Moses wrote down the book of Genesis, women were considered property. Is that fair? No. Is that right? It's not right. And when, when, Mo, when God had Moses write Genesis, you notice what he said. From the side of man, not from the foot to be tread on, not from the head to be the boss, but from the side to be equal. God made male and female. Guys, the reason, remember last week, okay? I know this is come kind of hopping around, but I'm gonna try to tie this all together. You remember last week when I showed you this picture? And I said, hey, who's right? Right? And I said, the, the way to determine who is right would be to know what? Who, who, put this, who put the number there? If you talk to who put the number there, they could tell you if it's a six or if it's a nine. And remember how we said, depending on what your perspective is, that will change how you see everything. We talk, it's, a, it's a big word, but it's worldview, right? If your worldview is God did that, you'll find evidence for God everywhere. If your worldview is there is no God, well, you won't be able to find the fingerprints of God anywhere in creation. And so we talked about how there's a lot of evidence that changes. Oh, sorry, Sarah. We, uh, I don't know what. Something got moved around with the mouse thing. There's a lot of evidence that changes. It changes how you interpret it and how you look on it depending on what you believe. If you don't believe there's a God, you're going to look at evidence and say, oh, this proves there's no God. If you do believe there's a God, you're going to look at evidence and say, oh, this proves and a lot of times it does prove that there's a God. But guys, here's the thing. Our worldview doesn't just change how we look at evidence and how we look at science. Our view, worldview changes how we look at us. It changes how we look at ourselves. And it changes how we look at others. Can I show you? Let's put, let's put our camera up here, okay? Let's imagine that this camera is a mirror. It's a reflection of all of you, okay? Now, I can't put all of you up at the same time, but we'll hit camera group, and it'll put it up for us because as we put you guys up, what I want you to think about is I want you to think about what you believe. See how these people are on the camera? Everybody wave at the camera. What you believe is a filter. Now, if you believe that you are cosmic accidents strung together, that blurs the picture of who you really are, doesn't it? It makes things cloudier, kind of makes things blurry, right? Maybe you believe something else. Maybe, so depending on what kind of filter I put in front of this camera, there's, there's, it doesn't change what's actually there. It doesn't change what's there, but it does change what? Changes how you see it. Let's take that filter off. And instead, let's skip down to where we talk about, here's the deal. For you and for me and for everybody in this room, there's going to come a time when you are gonna, you're, you're gonna be very tempted to try to find your identity in lots of things. You might try to find your identity in the fact that, hey, I'm a fourth grader, but I found out I'm really athletic. You might try to find your identity in the fact that, hey, I'm really, really cool. I'm really, really cool. I have lots of friends. 
You might try to find your identity. I did this for a while in the fact that, hey, I'm funny. I can make people laugh. That's who I am. You might try to find your identity in that, hey, I'm smart. I get all A's. That's who I am. But guys, here's the deal. When we find our identity in that, the problem is eventually we'll do something that makes us feel like that's not true or someone else will try to take that identity from us. Maybe you have someone that says, no, you're not athletic. You're clumsy. You're not cool. You're lame. You're not, you're not funny. You're not fun at all. You're not smart. You're dumb. And you'll have someone put that identity on you. Or maybe you feel that way about yourself without anybody doing it. Or maybe you put that identity on someone else. And you say, yeah, that person's dumb. That person's lame. But guys, here's the deal. The reason why Genesis is so important and the reason why we say God created the world, everybody say God created the world and everything in it. And then this isn't part of the definition, but it's important to say, that includes me. Because the only identity that matters is this. You and I are made in the image of God. You have inherent value. You are valuable because God made you. You don't have to earn that value. And here's the other thing. This is important. If you have Jesus Christ as your savior, your identity, who you are, you don't have to be athletic. You don't have to be cool. You don't have to be funny. You're a daughter of God or you are a son of God. That is your identity. God made you female and you are a daughter of God if, if, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your savior. God made you male. Are they different? Yes, they're different. And God wants those differences to come out. But here's the deal. He made you and you have value already. You don't have to earn it. So I'm going to pray for us. We're going to take the camera down so it's not distracting. And I hope we can remember that no matter what, no matter what other people say about you, no matter what you think about yourself, that everyone in this room knows that they are made in the image of God. Father God, I pray for every kid in this room. I pray that they would rest in the fact that they are made in your image, that they would feel valuable because of it, Lord, that they would trust it. And, and uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. All God's children said... Amen.